Welcome back to the show. Uh, fan favorites, Team Allegiance, coming up against the, uh, once again, gutted Denial. Great Denial, but the question is, on my mind, is there's rookies on both sides. Oh, there's still Oceans, who's been around? Who, who's the mid laner? Ah, uh, the mid laner is Xenotronics. Xenotronics is back. He used to play AD carry. Well, he officially, Denial announced him as their AD carry before the enemy roster all split apart. Right. Then he got moved to sub when that all happened. Right. Then we just saw that Mason face step down, so now he's transitioning back to mid. Roster apocalypse never ends. Makes an impact on him. Uh, he was on Risky Behavior, however, and alongside him on Risky Behavior was Skeely done. So the jungler and mid laner for Denial this season have some history. That's true. Um, I'm excited to see how Skeely plays. We've seen him do very well in the past. Um, probably one of the most underrated players worldwide. Uh, every time I get him on my team, whether it's ranked or in-houses or whatever, I mean, it's just always amazing. Like, the guy's rotations are incredible. Will he be able to fill the hole that, la uh, that Mask left when he went to Envy? I guess we're going to find out. Denial will go up against Team Allegiance. It's a big it's a big game for both these two. Allegiance lost to Eager last week. Denial beat Randozos handily, but then had roster changes themselves. And now that's going to be a put in a situation where is Denial now still going to be strong without the likes of Masked and Mesa the Face in this lineup? And can Allegiance step up now against technically a weakened denial? Kali, Guan Yu, Kepri getting taken away. Final band's going to be Janice. Uh, Raijin Isis still open, but Odin, of course, also still open. without a mace to the face on the team, I don't know that they'll be leaning towards their mid laner. Supports are most likely going to be picked here. Uh, Geb Athena still available, and it's going to be Athena to be picked up. Athena locked in. Ho Yi available, one of the most dominant hunters currently in the meta, at least viewed by a lot of people, as you can see during picks and bans by the pros. Yeah, I mean, he's been doing very well. Uh, Isis going to be taken pretty early. Uh, Odin Ho Yi both still available as well. Uh, they have been very common picks. Vamana as well. Matty Pocket has uh, proven. Um, that's my worry with the Isis pick here. If you're not going to go with Odin this as well, a lot of people are picking Odin into the Isis majority yeah. of the time. Isis did get a small nerf in the last patch, which is obviously prevalent in this. A little bit of damage taken off that wing gust and scaling, so it will hear him impact her in the later stages. A rather excited dare to care, I'm sure, uh, as Sir Pet finds her way back into the meta mm. this week, uh, one of his very uh, strong go-to gods. Be locked in. Sir Pet Isis, Denial Esports, to choose. So, Denial got a lot of options here. Gonna go for the solo lane in Bologna here. Can jungle, but most of the time we're gonna see that over in the solo lane. And finally, what else would they go with? Ho Yi. I'd say Ho Yi here. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be Ho Yi. Now, the, uh, talking about Denial once again, now Salt Machine or Benji or whatever he wants to call himself is the solo laner, correct? He is indeed. Because the rumor circulated before Mes uh, Mace left that it was going to be Salt Machine finding himself on a new team. Hmm. So it looks like maybe either the rumors weren't true or uh, Benji decided to stick with this group after all. Of course, second place from Worlds on the former enemy squad. Uh, really, this is more enemy, or I guess as much enemy as enemy is, given the fact that two members remain on each of those teams. We'll wait for Allegiance's next pick here. They've got the option for support here. They could look for the Geb, potentially, in this situation. Good against Athena yeah. for the most part. Good for removing some of the damage that Ho Yi can put out, too. If they don't grab Geb here, it's likely to be banned. It's going to be Vimana. Uh, decent matchup against Bologna. But, uh, probably a better endgame, depending on who gets picked for the mid lane. Uh, Odin immediately banned away as Denial really did wise. not pick it up in time. They've got Vermont on the side and Isis. Odin's going to have a field day if he does get onto the field against those two to take it away. Matty Pocket getting... I like the fact that Allegiance are protecting Matty Pocket here. He's got pull, still learning the solo lane. He's had very good performances there, wow. but his got pull's been Sun Wukong, Vermont, and Guan Yu, pretty much. Zeus gets banned away before Janus. A new world we live in. Or an old world we live in. Well, to be fair, Zeus got a buff this patch, which helps him out quite a bit. Very small buff. It, it, it impacts his laning phase... Very, very impactful. Yes. I like this pick a lot. Taking Soul out of the ta uh, off the table as well uh, strips away any chance of denial grabbing that. Uh, likely to see Janus in the mid, although uh, Raijin is still available. But the top tier mages have almost all been picked. A little bit worried about the Soul pick just in terms of physical damage for tower killing here. Gonna have to rely on Vermont and Sir Cat in this game to really get the physical damage out. I mean, less Soul is gonna get there later. Hun bots picked up over Alquang uh, or Thor. I really thought this was going to be a shoe in denial, having a different strategy in mind as Nua gets locked for the final point. Very, very safe mid laner there. It's good for against the circuit as well, just to be able to take yourself out of combat with the fire shards, just in case you get aggressed on. Team Allegiance, final pick. Looking for what is possibly their hunter. They do have soul, however. I mean, it should be Sol. Oh, here, no, I mean, it's, it's got to be their support. It's going to be support, yeah. Oh, Sylvanas. Okay, so uh, I fought against Incon Sylvanas today. Um, was he in mid lane? He was talking about that. He was in solo. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't realize that Sylvanas has one of the easiest co to confirm kills at level 5. Because? 
does the damage. Wrath of Terror does ridiculous amounts of damage, and no one really considers it. They see themselves ticking away, but they're dotted by two separate forms that are doing a ton of damage very quickly. So we know that Incon's been playing a lot of this god. Uh, I personally think he's definitely on the weaker end of the spectrum, so I'm interested to see what he's going to be able to do with this character when going up against such an established uh, character like Athena. To be fair, though, in that lane, it's got a Sylvanas and Sol. The push power is definitely in their favor against Athena Hoi early on. Ricochet has to confirm the double bounce to really get a full wave clear on. But it's not that easy to really land in that and make, make sure you position correctly for the double bounce. So it looks like the builds are pretty standard here. Helmets on both sides for Xenotronics and Lassus. And the funny thing is we're calling that standard now, you know? It is fairly standard. Like yeah. half a season ago, it would never have been seen the light of day. But with the cost reduction and the ability for how much physical protection it gives you, as well as magical power and penetration, that you see it so much more online. Soul going Tiny Trinket as well. Otherwise, it looks like everything is uh, pretty right and ready. It's always funny to see different Hunter builds in this meta as well, especially from North America. Vishim, going for the Transcendent Star here. We've seen plenty of Death's Toll into Boots options. Um, what one that we see more often than that? Zatman's been going for this crit build towards the end now that he's made an impact with. But Vishim going to go for the Transcendent Star here for the extra power. I think this should be one of our most even games, or even uh, even sets this split. Uh, both of these teams have had some roster changes, some rookies on the field as well. Uh, there's a lot of obviously talented players on the field. In fact, obviously all 10 of them are extremely talented. Uh, but I give a slight advantage here to the Denial Squad, given the fact that uh, Vishium, second place at Worlds versus Ocean, who's a rookie. Uh, and then, of course, you have Benji, second place at Worlds versus Matty Pocket, who's been playing this role for a couple of weeks. Well, mid harpies at the beginning of the game weren't taken by either side here. It's the junglers and mid laners combined in the mid for the time being. At the moment, the push power definitely in favor of Isis and Sika, as expected, as we tune in with the duo lane in con. Going very aggressive, forcing Vishu oh. back. Not going to find the pull, though. I like what Oceans was doing there, too. He was moving up and taking an individual shot at the creeps just to keep that heat stacked up as much as possible. Uh, mid camps are taking, it looks like, on both sides. Right side goes to blue, left side goes to red. However, look at the right hand side as well. Benji on that Bellona already taking away the imps in the jungle as well. Just getting a small advantage over Matty Pocket, but that can slowly build up because he's level three, just a little bit ahead oh, of no. Matty Pocket. He, uh, Matty Pocket should have been dead here, oh. but Benji actually missed the bludgeon slam. That's good. Benji trying for it, needs two more auto attacks. There's no way he has enough time, uh, but sends a fair warning to Matty Pocket. But that was also Benji, you know, he's Max Two points into Bludgeon there. Didn't go for Scourge. He already has Shield Bash online. So he went for the second point in Bludgeon. That's why the burst came from there. But he still missed it. He did miss it. He still missed it. But the enhance was still stronger. And that's the thing. Uh, it's the same for me with the Bludgeon and Sun Wukong's Cudgel. You cannot dodge these abilities. They can only be missed. Well, the best thing for Allegiance in this game now is that the dual line is going to push with the Sol and Sylvan, which they're trying to zone at the moment as much as possible. And then obviously Isis Circuit in the mid lane will get push power on too, so keep an eye on for invasions here onto Denial's jungle, especially on this left-hand side. Oh, Incon uh, going for that grab a little bit off the mark, doesn't quite find it, but a raw grab there would have been very, very dangerous. Xenotronic's going to be forced back, a superior push from Isis wins the day again. Now Xenotronics has, was signed up originally for Denial as an AD carry, used to play mid lane right. overall, then transitioned to AD carry. Now he's back to the mid lane play style again. So he's gonna have to go for the transitions of what's different in mid compared to the previous seasons when I played in season two. And to be fair, it's not changed too much apart from you share more experience and you sit on the back line more. It's true. It's pretty much it. Uh, we're watching Benji here, able to lock Matty Pocket behind his tower. You'll note he's already stolen the boar. He has his to deal with. He's possibly going to be going for the blue buff in 45 seconds after the next wave. We check no, it with Matty Pocket just to check his experience straight. here, because it looks like he should. Yeah, he's a couple of minions off hitting level five here, so Benji just going to abuse him as much as possible and freeze him off this wave. Uh, right side, those are going to be double boars stolen as uh, Incon and Oceans team up to get a little bit of extra experience. Shadow Q getting pushed under his tower again. Big rotation as well from the jungler and mid laner as Isis was considering coming over here. Last is thinking about it, Delta K is definitely over here, though. The level four for two members of Denial. They want to get this farm on, but they've got to be wary of Sir Kurt hanging around the corner. Shadow Q, uh, standing in a precarious situation, should know that there's some trouble going on. Rooted. Looking for Athena. Got to get the dash. Don't Almost. find the pull. Gank fails, but a good attempt. Incom was trying to catch him right off the dive bomb. Uh, had he landed that, that would have resulted in a kill. Look but. at the call from Denial, though. They know it's okay on the left-hand side, so they invade the blue buff immediately. On point, this denies more experience from Matty Pocket, the solo laner. Gives it over to Benji for extra sustain as well. But a good response from Allegiance, straight to the red. Honestly, I don't think there's a warrior in the game right now that functions worse than Vimano from behind. Without blue buff. Right, I mean, like, he if they can lock 
Vamana down from getting that solo lane experience, keep him level 5, level 6 for another minute, minute and a half, it's going to cripple his rotations to the point where he will he will be basically a non-factor throughout this game. When you talk about that as well, he's already used Teleport Mighty Pocket over in that right-hand side, Ooh. so not going to be able to rotate around the map if they so choose. And Benji, well, his is still available. Not being back to base yet himself, however, and just pushing in that wave after taking the right-hand imps as well. He will return to base now, more than likely for the full Warrior Tabby. Uh, video taking a little bit of damage here from Oceans. This uh, soul carry over in the left side. Maybe not uh, very unfamiliar to fans at home, but still, you expect to see her a lot of times in the mid, mid lane. Well, mid has had more success when combined with another carry, another hunter for the right. most part in the games, whether it be mid, whether it be in the duo lane. The only real team that's really made it succeed in the duo lane was, I want to say, Paradigm. With Pantera. Pa Paradigm and Panthera, when they run the hunter in mid lane alongside, the Neath, the Chiron, the Medusa that's in the true. mid lane. The really Medusa soul is so fun to watch. Painful. I would like to see this something similar uh, happen for Envy, where we see that Kali ADC uh, while Soul takes the mid lane. I think we can see more and more of these assassins could potentially coming into the duo lane now. Even Bakasura, even though he's technically weak right now, I think Bakasura would be a good match against Hunters, like he generally is in the early stages. So far, uh, Dare to Care unable to find any damage at all. Five minutes into the game has not made that circuit rotation that we expect. And I think this is Dertica's strategy this game because of how he, the games against Ego went, to be fair. He, he was very, very aggressive on the Alquan, got picked a few times, didn't really manage to get himself online because of it. So this time, let's farm ourselves up a little bit more on the circuit, wait for the right opportunity. And that circuit pick, for me, felt like it was picked because of the fact that Isis and Vermana were planned for that team. Over on the right side, major failed gank attempt so far. Three Amen. ultimates used, and Skeletron's jump was actually off the mark a little bit too late. Shadow Q's damage doesn't even get applied. There's a rotation from Dare to Care now, and obviously Incon's on his way too, looking to turn this one around. Crazy rotation from both teams. I'm surprised the Legions came over there too, knowing Mighty Pocket was safe. They could have looked for some pressure in mid, which there is. Trying to make a play. Xenotrog in some trouble. Uh, did he hit that? Nope. It looks like, yes, Incon will be credited with the kill. Wrath of Terra uh, hits, but the purification stops the knockup. Still a lot of damage though. So they do pick up the kill in mid lane. The Legions Winning out overall with Denial is the one executing for the gank attempt there. Looking towards the Gulf here for a second, but obviously Lassus using that protective circle during that engagement means they're not going to have the opportunity to go for it. With that, 0-1 to one right now, as you see Allegiance with a pretty decent early kill, a 700 gold advantage, despite the fact that Matty Pocket has been all but controlled throughout the beginning of this game. He's level 8 right now, still a level behind Benji. Trouble here for Skeleton, but a good save by Sh what? But Shadow Q's going to get ulted and pulled into danger. Oh. The root missed from Incon then. If it would have connected with Lassis just behind them, it should have been a kill potentially on to that support player. But with the pressure there, Allegiance swinging around towards the Gulf Fury again. A little bit risk just yet, especially with the lane position of the minions. But look at right hand side, Benji going aggressive on Matty Pocket. Got it. Got the ultimate, got the buff. Yeah, very smart play. Just anything they can do to take experience away from Matty is going to be very strong. Uh, take a look at the gold, already a 500 difference uh, between Maddie Pocket and Veggie, and even with that, Allegiance uh, with a small lead. Surprisingly, we are low on the damage charts right now for seven minutes in the game. I'm surprised by how little damage we've actually seen in this game. I think that comes down to a rather right nervous side. denial. Benji, not in a perfect position here, but of course, no ultimate from Dare to Care available. They're going to try for Lassus. They're going to get him cleanly. Not enough peel coming out from the support. Incon does have his ultimate. But uh, he's going to have to walk away Skilidon from this needs one. to be careful there because Dare to Care is behind him. No ultimate available for Dare, though, or Skilidon. Skilidon, good rotation, though. Picks up the kill, goes his ultimate off. Good rookie debut for him in the Pro League. Lass is still down for 10. Should uh, be more than enough time for Denial to clean up their jungle and ensure that more alleviation happens for Nua. Has a little bit of trouble hanging out with that Isis uh, so early in the game. Level 9, the the wave push. Oh, looking for the left hard hand side here. Onto Vichium. That's get jumping over the wall. Going to try and go aggressive. Oh. Doesn't manage to find the kiss, but he does get the ultimate out from Shadow Q, which turns it around and forces Allegiance back. Shadow Q going to dash in. They're going to go for this. A stun onto Dare to Care. Decent damage, but they, they got to know that there's no way to follow that up. 
it seemed like they were just trying too hard there. I don't know why they followed, went in so aggressive. They weren't going to be able to pick him up. Even if they went aggressive, Incon could have helped him with the ultimate and the heals as well. It would have been very, very difficult for him to find a kill. And Xenotronics has a level one fire shards. You're looking at like 70 damage off that bad boy. Big win for Allegiance, that. They got two ultimates for the price of zero. That was just on paper. You're quite happy with that situation right now. I'd be looking towards a Gold Fury potentially, knowing that Hoey's not got yeah. his sons available. Athena's not got an ult. So if you catch her back in, go for it. I think Shadow Q's ult was fine. Um, obviously, he didn't need to do it, but it's easier to spot that from the bird's eye view. We knew Agreed. that Sir Ket wasn't going to hit that, but Vishim had no idea. For calling for that all, I think was a very smart idea. But whoever made the call to continue following that fight up with uh, uh, Sylvanas there, I mean, there was no potential for Shadow that. Shadow Q gets silenced, gets stunned, gets hit by the ultimate as well. Fear no evil from Skeledon will stop the pressure onto him, however, forcing Dare to care back. Shadow Q will survive Skeledon. Still trading out with him, needs to be a little bit careful, so Somersault's away, Beautiful but he's a shot. spirit ball. And got him! Lasses! Wow! That was all Lassus, though. I did oh. not expect that much damage to come out, and that cleanly Lassus not missing a single shot there. And uh, let's talk about this uh, attempt. Oceans has already started it up. No ult for Vishium, no ult for Shadow Q, and uh, Benji's on the wrong side of the map. Just the time as well. Vishium goes back to base. Immediately you see Oceans go over towards that Gulf here, knowing his team's going to be following him in. Allegiance get themselves off to a great start now. Good gold. Actually, just reducing the gold that we were actually down. I'm surprised they were down so much. Oh, that's down to Benji more than anything, I guess. We'll talk a little bit about Denial here. Um, now, this is not me implying in any way, shape, or form that Skeledon is not as good as a Just. In fact, I think the skill ceiling for Skeledon is one of the highest that we've seen in the jungle, period. The guy's a, a natural, and he's a genius. But this comp went over here after replacing a Just with the same player twice and then losing him. And now they're down 1-2 at this stage of the game with a Gold Fury down. Does it go through your head? I mean, can you erase that? I mean, is it, is it going through your head like, oh my god, Skeledon got caught? Like, you I don't know. You can't blame the new jungler. He's, well, let's, let's be you real. He is not a new jungler. No, you can't blame new to the Pro League, which is a bigger stage. A much bigger stage than you've ever been on before. I, ever. It, for me, I don't feel like Skeledon is worried about this. And he has played for COG in the past as a sub. True. This is not his first attempt at the Pro League. He's not his full first rodeo for the right. most part. I agree with that. He's so not going to jump in, but immediately silence. Has to juke out the Spirit Ball as well. Misses the pull from Incon. So, aggression subsides for now. Incon's eventually going to hit one of those. It's, it's going to be awesome. The, I, I have a feeling he's going to hit the wrong person. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> and then we're all like, oh, poor Incon. He's going to pull Skeleton on it. He's going to ult four people. But the thing is, what a lot of people always say, you don't hit what you don't throw out. Actually, Chiron says that. Does Doesn't he? he? Does he? Something like that. I don't know. He's always yelling about motivation. He uses a cheaty ability that just like does free damage. <laughs> like, well, you can't miss, but you don't throw out. You can't even cast it if he's wrong. He There's hit him. a pull in the mid lane. Spirit Ball does not connect, however, as purification was used, and immediately Fire Shards follows it up from Xenotronics to get him away from the danger. Uh, one to two, Denial keeping the pressure on Incon. Uh, Is that one for like eight in pulls now? Uh, something similar, yes. Uh, we have a Dynasty Plate it's Helm, by the way. Oh, using mid lane by Lassie's there, just defensive as Shadow Q went in for that taunt. Heals himself up. Back to a decent amount. Pole missing from Incon just off the mark. And now Denial looking to invade this red buff. Now Skeledon does have the ult available. Vishim stealing away the balls on the left hand side nice. too. Good play from Denial. Actually, they get the gold lead back with that. Take a look at the grass. Mm -hmm. And whoa, what is this experience? Oh, okay, that's Benji versus Matty. That's going to be Benji versus Matty, right? I mean, Skeledon is Two ahead. Levels. Xenotronics is even. Shadow Q's even. Yeah, it's got to be mostly the solo lane at this point. Yep, Hunter. Juggler and Solo are currently ahead in terms of experience. Not necessarily by a whole level, but by most part of one right. at the moment for them. So good position for Denial to be in, especially after losing the Gold Fury. And this should factor in around, I want to say the 15 minute mark, is when we should start seeing this potentially come back in their favor because of the Gold Fury. I see a meditation picked up uh, for Vamana. We've seen a lot of meds from Vamana's lately. I'm worried about this item specifically because he's already gone into not health, which means he's not scaling it well. And the fact that he's Vamana means, and, and the Lassus and Incon are on healers as well, and that Oceans can heal, that they're going to be very wary about major burst healing. I'm expecting, we already have two weakening two curses. curses. We're yeah. likely to see more reductions as well. Uh, we're unlikely to see the same mistake that we saw last game where there wasn't counter builds. Denial, and mostly Shadow Q, loves meta and he loves being able to counter-build and outbuild his opponents. I'm expecting a serious amount of reduction here. Skeleton hanging around this right-hand side here, looking for pressure onto Mali Pocket here. Tower already at half health. Three members in the jungle here for Denial. As we tune in with Benji, poking down Mali Pocket some more. They're looking for the blue buff at the moment, and Mali Pocket won't be able to get involved in this. And first kill, Skeleton finds Dare to Care. 
Denial making a full comeback and keeping control. And there's the weakening curse we were talking about. Lassus not in a great spot for us to burn his ultimate. Gone. Got to buy some time for Lassus to heal himself up. Too Big burst much. on Skeeter on who hung around too much. And the in-hand will be enough to bring him down. Lassus, credit for the kill. 545 damage. And honestly, that wasn't a play made by Lassus. That was an accident made by Xenotronics. By hitting a major stun and a huge shining metal, he brought that entire circle of protection to oh. the top right as Benji finds another kill. Three to three, but now we see the score. Really good communication coming out from the boys of Denial there for that fire shot to come down at the same time as Benji hit that bludgeon. But Lassis looking for the pick on Xenotronics. Gonna get Beautiful. stuck. Great sanctuary though from Lassis to avoid the damage. Spirit Ball duped out by Xenotronics. So no more aggression there, but good play by both those mid laners. Look at that healing too. Lassis uh, already back up to a rather safe position. Vishim able to dodge the Cellar Burst on the left side. Should he choose the boxes, he might be in trouble. You see Dare to Care coming over. Does Dare to Care have his blink? He, he does. does. He's going to go into the ball pit potentially here, but Shadow Q should have spotted him in the jungle there yeah. on that rotation. So this is unfortunately not going to find the kill that he was looking for. Dare to Care immediately backs away knowing Shadow's in the area. Gold Fury back up. First one uh, looks like went to Allegiance. Second one, I don't know. We'll see. It could go either way, but I feel like with the way Denial's playing right now, they have the experience lead on paper. Benji's going to make a much bigger impact, I want to say, right now over Maddie Pocket. But still, Vermana late game is still Vermana late game, and Sir Cat gets a good poison off. It could change the fight. She already has uh, some decent cooldown reduction, 20 on the board. Last is going into what is likely going to be a Book of Thoth. It's unlikely we'll see such an early Soul Reaver, though we did see it once today. Red buff being invaded here. Incon on defense duty gets the root off. Gets a three-man ultimate off. Nobody following up, however. The dot damage is ticking away as the burst comes out from Xenotronic onto Incon. He's not got anything else left as he gets pulled into danger. Has to use his purification and his sanctuary. And there's a Fear Evil by Skeledon to give him more defense. But Lassis is going to try and pick off Skeledon because of it. Thankfully, Benji is there. Now, Benji is being rotated on. Benji should be okay, though. He does have his ultimate available, which means he'll be able to escape for free. Uh, Gold Fury getting gestured. Is it possible they go for this? All five starting to rotate. Yeah, they're going to force the issue. Three ultimates available for Denial, though, including the Suns and the Fire Shards available. Pull misses from Incon. Gold Fury just below half. Vishim going to drop the Suns onto Incon as he gets taunted by Shadow Q. Incon is very low, but will survive. There comes the Supernova down as well from Sol as Mighty Pocket is starting to beat back Denial. They didn't spend enough time bursting down Maddie. Maddie's still level 15, able to get in there. In uh, Ocean's taking a fair amount of damage. Incon gets back to the base safely as Maddie controls the front line far more strongly than we would have expected. Oh, Skiddy with that nice hot blink to get Shadow Q in range to put pressure onto Lassis, who Triple has bounce. the purification away. But unfortunately, Look at this Skiddy guy! Dumb. Spirit Ball over the wall. Matty Pocket making an impact after being bludgeoned over and over again in the solo lane. Lassis' long-range Spirit Balls, blind Spirit Balls, have been incredible this game. Uh, Legions finds two kills in that engagement despite uh, not having a great initiation into it. And overcommitting from Denial puts them in a bad spot. Shadow Q trying to make the play here. Athena, Vishim. not really the character you're looking for to solo steal, but we do have Vishim here as well. Suns are down. Are available. Incon still tanking this one up. Resets it. Gets the ult off on Shadow Q before he gets the turn off. So Shadow tries to reset. Go Fury goes to his legions. But what's the fight going to happen? Because Shadow Q's fallen already. He's already down. Now you're going to see Benji trying to turn his attention to Incon. Get a big ult off. Bludgeon as well. Will secure Incon. But now Benji's in trouble. Oh, Spear Ball again. Right to the back line. Able to get Dare out. Matty Pocket not in a great spot. Should be able to dash away. And it will be a one for one. Support for support. But Allegiance once again taking the objective. And Lassus. for that, I'm, I'm looking at Benji. He sent that first bludgeon out at, for a kill instead of going right for the Gold Fury, which I'm pretty sure he would have stolen. Lass is having a great game. Though. You mentioned it about his Spirit Balls being on point. To be fair, Lass is playstyle. It's always been about snipes. If he can play Raz, if he can get Cold Culkins, which we don't really seem too much on. But anything with a snipe is where he's strongest overall. Finding the wraps on Anubis is another example of something that he loves to do. Midside Tier 1 to fall. It looks like uh, Denial will get a small win in the objective, Colin, as 500 gold gets sent their way. Right side tier one could fall as well. It's possible we'll see a rotation, but no, Benji gonna take the back here. Uh, not in the greatest of health. And here's the key though, the gold fury's gone down twice to Allegiance, but the gold is even, and that's only a tier one tower difference on the map right now. Shouldn't make up two gold furies, Dion. It really shouldn't. So that's just down to superior farming and rotations and actually stealing away the enemy jungle. Allegiance are keeping themselves in with these gold furies. They're not getting a lead off them. 
I mean, the, the levels are the big deal. Uh, Benji still three levels ahead of Matty Pocket. Skilodon level ahead. Uh, Xenotronics notably a level behind uh, as... Uh, I don't know. I mean, Shadow Q has a level. Vicium's even. It seems like Denial should still have this lead pretty soundly. There was a fight for that red buff there. That last is... I don't think he actually won that war at all. Lost his buff. Todd from Shadow Q onto two members. Dead to K. Gets hit. Forced to, to use the Death Bane away. Spirit Ball onto Shadow Q. She's He's going to get dead. rooted in place for the wing. Goes big burst damage. Fair no even from Skeledon will buy him time. But Wrath of Terror secures the kill. Lots of dot damage. They're trying to focus down Lass's Fire Shard's not going to do it. But can Skeledon? No, not bad. But Benji will be able to find it. Dare to care. Escaping. Incon healing. Matty Pocket rotating. And it looks like Benji will be escaping. Mighty late on this rotation, but can he make an impact? No, Maybe he's going to get bursted heavily. Maybe not. Where's the big baby? The big baby's in base. We got two down right there as we see Ocean's finding a return kill on a Skeledon, who was necessary for the kill. I wonder if at the end it was worth it trading out your jungler for the solo laner. Either way, uh, an even set in the gold. You'll notice not much of a change there, but experience difference. Still 5,000 ahead. And to be fair, that whole fight there was all the difference between the two solo laners. Benji made the rotation early, got the all off, killed on Lassus, who was about to escape. And Mighty Pocket turned up late and then got collapsed on because of it. Incon, under pressure. Dare to care, just like walked into that damage. Might be in some trouble here. Benji trying to lock this down. That Frostbound Hammer doing work and it'll be enough with the swing on the bludgeon. However, He's pretty low, able to escape, and another tier one for Denial. Allegiance was winning the map, but suddenly Denial surges ahead. Back to the graphs. Back to the graphs indeed, and we'll see. It's a 7,000 experience lead at 20 Jeez. minutes in for Denial. Allegiance uh, down on goal by only 600, however, thanks to the goal furies. But they're really starting to lose this war of attrition so far. The levels are starting to make a big impact in these team fights. Matty goes for a lot of cooldown reduction late on the Frostbound Hammer, so he's going to have a hard time controlling the back line. It'll be difficult for him to kill Xenotronics at this stage without it, or at least a Fatalis. So uh, at 0 to 4, at only 9,200 gold comparatively to Benji, 1,700 gold ahead with a Pestilence Online. You know, we talked about that reduction coming out. It's going to be hard for them to deal with. Hard indeed, Skeledon over on this right hand side, looking towards Mighty Pocket, but left! Dare to Care is exploded. He didn't have purification, or obviously he couldn't use his blink while he was in combat. Gets evaporated. Really looked like he was living up to his name there. It did not look like he was caring that he was fighting two people. Just got rushed down and destroyed. To be I fair, when we saw the games against Eager, Dare to Care seemed to struggle a lot. He played Alquang both games, but struggled to get himself going. And it seems the same way this game. Only one kill, three assists so far in this engagement. It's not been as aggressive in the early game that we would have liked for a circuit to be really looking to do. 8-8 eight to eight reads the scoreline on the top. Still, uh, Denial with a fair advantage. Gold Fury coming back up inside of a minute. Fire Giant available as well. We're past 20, so it's a possibility with another Tier 1 to fall. That's the final Tier 1 structure Rotation. for Allegiance. So from Allegiance, there's three members here. Shadow Q on the way to make it a 3v3 fight. Incon chasing. Spirit Ball comes out. Big Wrath of Terror hitting three. Circle of Protection down, but everyone escapes it for now as the Vino Evil drops. Skeely don't be pressured by Lassies, who's not really worried, but Oceans has made a rotation from the jaw lane. Vishim's on his way too. We're going to see a 5v5 as the junglers are coming as well. They've invested so much time and energy into Incon, and he's just healing repeatedly, painting the floor there with the soul, doing decent damage. Shadow Q in a lot of trouble, but Matty Pocket without that Frostbound Hammer, Ooh. unable to commit. Lassus actually had that and didn't let it go. Matty Pocket one hit away, and Skeledon, or Vicium is going to find that was a That was a jump he from... dives all the way in, uses that? his Sang to avoid a lot of damage, luckily as well. So it actually trades out okay. One for one, solo for solo. Uh, that's a win in my book for Allegiance, considering a three-level difference between them. Uh, and with the healing coming out repeatedly from Incon, this is a great position for them. A little bit aggressive there from Dare to Care, who ambushed away immediately after clearing that wave. Xenotronics and Vishim putting out a lot of pressure here with Skeledon winking in the wing once again after coming back from base. Surprising that they're just like walking away from this, considering they had the sustain advantage pretty drastically, and Xenotronics had no escape possible there. Hmm. Quietest member of the team, Oceans. He sat there with his 105, not died in this game yet. The only one not to die, him and Vishim, to be fair. Neither of them died in this one, but had a good lane in phase so far. Got most of his core build online. Do you expect to see a Polynomicon come out here? Um, it's no, possible. I would like to see some cooldown reduction first. Cooldown reduction, of course, increasing the damage that Polynomicon can do. Well, the first goal for of the game may go the way of denial this time round after Allegiance took the last two. Skeleton on zone duty, you're going to meet Incon here. He 
can use the old if he required, but he's just creating space. Go for he's not gone down yet. Shadow Kyu goes and gets a taunt off on Lassis. Lassis being focused by the Fear No Evil as well as Lassis. He's in a whole lot of trouble, gets the circle of protection down, gets a bomb off. Vishim has to jump away, but being chased by Maddie for a second changed his mind after the fire shots hit. Vishim able to actually get out of there. Lassis was trying to hold off for as long as possible while well, healing and killing. Uh, I think he should have chose one. Either heal early and try to get out of there, or let it blow up after you've died. Um, instead, he, he tries to pop it for the save. Doesn't quite kill Vishim. Still falls uh, slightly out of position with both of his relics down. Incon unable to peel in time, despite a rather strong Wrath of Terra. Denial takes a free kill and walks away. They do take the free kill, but they don't get the Gold Fury Denial there, so still in the game is Allegiance. If they get the next Gold Fury, that should even things up once again in terms of gold. Shadow Q just going to go back to farming mid lane. Obviously, Denial invested a lot in their ultimates there. Only Vishim's is available right now, so they'll probably wait that out a little bit for the Skeletons at least to come back up. Incon and Dare to Care pushing up the mid lane. Gold Fury still available. Denial didn't quite clean it up when they were going for it last time, but they do have a 2300 gold advantage already. It's possible they can continue this pressure by taking this Gold Fury and adding another 1500 to the mark. That's okay, investing in Malice here as, as his next major item after Jotun's. Do you like the Malice over Deathbringer on Sekka? A lot of people discuss it all the time. I mean, honestly, it depends on how many times you crit. Yeah. On Sir Ket, I think it's probably the most sound, given the fact that she's unlikely to crit twice in one engagement. Or at least on the same person. Torn onto Lassis once again. Skilled on. See what was going to happen there before going in. Instead, jumps away and gets pulled by Incon. Has to use his Fear No Evil anyway defensively. You were right, by the way. He did pull the wrong person because if, if he didn't hit that, Lassis would have hit the Spirit Ball. And he pulls in the Fear No Evil, negates the fight completely, and there See? was no way to kill him. Called it. Go for your side by Vishium, though. No signs of Allegiance noticing this just yet. Obviously, the rest of Allegiance pushing mid lane. And with this three members showing here, they've got to be quite reset. happy. But Vishium resets the Gold Fury. Yeah, he reset. He's taking too much damage. Talk about taking too much damage. Benji's in trouble here. Misses. The Spirit Ball misses. Has to use the Eagle's Rally to get away. But he'll be fine. He'll be happy with the Circle now being on cooldown. Right side mid camps. Five man split. Although, of course, Sir Ket getting a, a fair amount of gold. He's still getting 90 gold herself, thanks to Bumba's Mask. Left side, it seems that we're going to get a Gold Fury bait. I think it's a general fight. I don't think we're going to see Denial want to do this without the Fear No Evil being available. Do have the Sun from Vishim, however, if they want to try and go for that. But Eagle's Rally is also down from Benji, so they've got to be very careful there. As once again, Allegiance trying to just siege up the mid lane here, getting taunted by Shadow Q. Lassis is in a world of pain after Sanctuary, still being chased in by the team. However, he will go down to the fire shards of Xenotronics and the pressure from Allegiance. Well, it's gone now, it's all denial. And Benji has Frostbound, which means Incon is slowed. He's trying to trade back and forth. Matty Pocket rotates over, uses his ult to try to get some health back, but there is three full health members of denial. There's minions tanking the tower up in Xenotronics. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this guy. I mean, he was an ADC player. He finds himself in the mid role, playing sub back on the roster, sub back on the roster, and he's 327. I imagine it's pretty close to top damage if he doesn't already have it. Can we see the damage charts? He's new war, so he should be near the top of the charts, I want to say. But Gofiwi, going to be started here to wait for those. Yep, 24,000 damage. Not even the game. close. And even though Lassis, to be fair, has been on point with those spirit balls and the damage over and over again, Nuwa, safe in the mid lane, hard to pick off, and even if she does get picked, she'll at least get a fire shot off before she goes down. In fact, if you add the damage for Incon and Lassus, that's where you're going to get up to Xenotronics right now. That's crazy. That's a little crazy. Actually, to be fair, what's crazy is Incon's damage is above his jungle and solo lane right about now. Dude, Sylvanas swings, man. People don't know. Got a lot of dot damage. But, I mean... He can't escape. I mean, to be fair, in terms of his build, he's not gone for any sort of damage increases on here. It's just base damage that he's using here. Wrath of Terra swings, man. In fact, uh, let, let's check out Incon real quick. Hover on Wrath of Terra, just so you guys can see this. Remember, this ticks five times. So at level five, this hits for 300 damage on whatever player he hits. And we've seen him hit three, four, five-man ults. I mean, you say level five. It's very rare that a support gets to level five, five of his ult. So level oh. four if you're lucky. There's he, a pull. He tried to pull him and stop him from taking the Sentry Ward. Too little, too late. I think he's uh, four, of, four of 12 now <laughs> in terms of pulls. If you're keeping count at home, f tell me if I'm wrong afterwards. I think it's definitely more than 12. What, more than 12 pulls? Yeah. Uh, maybe. I, I oh, mean, it should be nice. If we were on the eight that you said the first time, I think it's been more. He was one time. for eight, and now he's four for 12. Yeah, I don't think that's correct. He held the pulls all that time <laughs> after maxing it. 
So, Allegiance on the back foot here, as you can see the pressure is all for Denial when you look at the map, minions pushed up everywhere, Benji, a little bit overextended on this left hand side, realising that there's nobody on the map, he's going to back away, jump in happily, as two members in the right hand side, the damage dealers for this team I want to say, with Clay, minions and a Hunter, this tower's not going to take long to take down for free. Yeah, that was very, very quick actually, and another 1500 gold for Denial, almost up 8000 at this stage. Uh, and this game has really Steve gotten Dunn away. Looking for Lassis, though, with that fear. I mean, Lassis in the world. Of her. The minions actually body box oh him to just God. continue getting hit by that fear. That evil. is really unlucky. I mean, there's no skill involved there. That was completely unlucky. And we're going to get some fire shards, decent damage, shoot Jeez. people at critical now as Oceans is trying to get away. The ethereal form will get him away. Ricochet comes out from Vishim, evaporates Mighty Pocket with the help of Xenotronics on that new war as well. Denial Phoenix. pushing down mid lane, looking Phoenix. for the Phoenix. The rest of Elite, they have to back up. <laughs> oh, Clay Minions, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. You can't fault them, brain. man. Their brains are made of clay. You can. Look, hit the Phoenix. <laughs> Who cares about the Minions right now? But they get the Phoenix now. Shadow Q still looking for the pick on Dare to Care on this side. I guess they know his purification's down. There's oh the burst Lord. coming out from Xenotronics. Th what? And Dare to Care will be evaporated. He had no purification available, and that CC chain lasted long enough to pick up the kill on the Dare. Well, the big key is Shadow Q now has Max Taunt. You know, he's level 17, got his Max Taunt online. And when you don't have purification, you're going to have a bad time. So Ket falls down, and the Fire Giant may do so as well. Allegiance, they're going to have to try and come over and defend, but will they be here in time? I don't think so. Incon does not have a blink, so it's not like he can pressure to the front line. Lassus has no way to get through Benji. Fire Giant gets taken cleanly. Denial already has a uh, Phoenix down as well, so a 10,000 gold lead, Phoenix pressure in the mid lane, and a Fire Giant. That's usually the recipe for success. It's so far so good for Denial. I mean, last week they beat Randozos 2 well, then they've had two roster changes, and they're still looking pretty good. Yeah. Putting a good performance against Allegiant, Xenotronics and Skeleton seem to be working out in this roster well. The early game wasn't great. The, the objective control, which was a little bit slack, I want to say, compared to what I'd expect out of a team with Shadow Q on it, who's always about objectives, right. was a bit quite surprising, but it seems to be going okay. 13 and 9, only four kills between them. And we, we saw a point where Allegiance was up many, many kills and still even in gold. You see what Denial can do with four kills. It's pretty impressive. Just look at Dertica then. He just lost all that health just from Athena. The taunt, the shield wall connected, that was it. That's all he's happening. He went, okay, I'm going to walk away again. Still wait for his purification to come up, which is another 35 seconds. As a tier two falls in left. Obviously, five members with the fire giant. Denial can look for pressure in this lane, keeping out for Shadow Q and those taunts because they're making an impact. Left side Phoenix to be pressured. Incon finds one. Xenotronics uses his purification pretty early, but still able to walk away. Uh, Dare to Care burns his ultimate gets and it gets in. removed. It gets deleted straight afterwards. Xenotronics goes onto a rampage. Now the Phoenix is going to fall on this side too. And immediately Denial swing round towards the middle. Will they go for the right? It looks like that's the call. Sprint has been popped. And they're all going to swing round to pick it up. Remember, if you activate a jump or a leap ability, at the same time that Sir Ket ults you, it negates the ultimate and takes the cooldown. Uh, one of the reasons that Sir Ket was a uh, risky pick in certain parts of the meta. All three Phoenixes down, Fire Giant still available as Matty Pocket forced to ult early, does not have a Fatalis, which means that is a wasted ultimate. He is now a sitting duck in these fights. This should be the end of the it game. It looks like it should be the game. I mean, Denial do not want to go back to base and spend the gold. They're trying to force this. Big Spirit Ball hits, though, and a lot of pressure to Skiddy down, which will seem evaporated, but the Titan will fall down, and Denial will go into 3-0 and oh win streak now. It seems to me at the beginning of that, that Allegiance had enough of a game plan to hold them off. They were winning. It seemed like a good plan. I mean, Allegiance looked good. Golf here is taken. The right. heals came out well for them. I don't feel Dare to Care came online, though. La La Dare to Care, it is what it is. I mean, he missed a few shots. He was getting caught out of position. I think a lot of it came down to Matty versus Benji. Benji I just out-farmed Matty Pocket. They, you know, forced a lot of rotations to the right side. Mm -hmm. Benji got to, like, level 1,000, and Matty Pocket's sitting here at level 12. You can see him right here as he jumps directly Making in, getting back. a kill on the Lassus, and then focusing down Oceans. There's nowhere to go. He's activating that Frostbound Hammer over and over, just controlling them, forcing them out, and then the target switch, like this this guy, Salt Machine, we saw him play for so many months and he just was not by any means an impressive player. And then sometime between the end of SPL Season 2 and Super Regionals, and Super Regionals <laughs> the Hyperbolic Time Chamber hit and he turned into like a real and very scary solo lane. You just made a Dragon Ball Z reference. Well, of course I did. Are you crazy? That's terrible. What do you think is going on it's right a now? Bologna. Well, a Bologna was killing people for casting.
Hey, that was game one anyway. Allegiance need to really find something here because they've slipped to zero three. Denial have climbed to three and zero. What's going to happen game two, DM? I don't know. Allegiance had a good early game. Denial seems a little bit more polished. We'll see if Allegiance can step it up in game two in just a second. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with the conclusion of this set. Stick around.